In 1987, there was a new name on the FA Cup trophy. The first time this had happened in nine years. The name on the trophy was Coventry City. The Sky Blues shocked English football to win the first major honour of their history and did so in one of the greatest FA Cup finals ever played. This is a story of when Coventry City won the FA Cup. Coventry City had been a team with mixed fortunes throughout their history. In 1983, the sky was not shining sky blue however. Many players were out of contract and the club were facing financial difficulties. Coventry native Bobby Gold took on the manager's job, despite describing it as like being thrown into the lion's den. Coventry were amongst the favourites for relegation and only stayed up by the skin of their teeth. The next summer, Golds brought in more new players, some of whom would go on to be club legends, such as goalkeeper Steve Orgizovich and Cyril Regis. Gold, whilst he had helped rebuild the club, was sacked around Christmas due to poor form, and his assistant Don McKay took over, but he would only last until April. He was replaced by a management duo of managing director George Curtis and youth coach John Sillett. Under this duo, the Sky Blues won two of their last three games, and just about stayed up. The duo remained in charge for the following season. Hopes were not high for Coventry, with it being widely expected they would be in a relegation battle once more. Keith Houchin was brought in from Scunthorpe, and things were soon much brighter than expected. After losing on the opening day, they defeated Arsenal and would go unbeaten until October. They established themselves in the top half, with their front line of Dave Bennett and Cyril Regis in fine form. They began their FA Cup campaign in January, with a 3-0 win over Bolton Wanderers. They then faced a trip to Old Trafford to face Alex Ferguson's Manchester United. Despite the Red Devils being favourites, Curtis said before the game, our name is on the cup. On the frozen pitch, Keith Houchin would get the only goal, as Coventry went through, with Alex Ferguson full of praise for Coventry's performance. Next up was Stoke City a second division side who had only experienced one defeat since November. Coventry withheld the pressure from the Potters, and a goal from Mickey Ginn was enough to send them through to the quarter-finals. Yet another away trip would follow, this time to Sheffield Wednesday. Fortunately, this win was much easier, as Coventry ran away as 3-1 winners to steal a spot in the semi-finals for the first time. Coventry would return to Hillsborough as they faced second division Leeds, with 27,000 Coventry supporters making the trip to Yorkshire. Steve Ogrizovich made a number of saves to keep the scores level, but Leeds would be in front 14 minutes in. A great deal of time passed with Leeds' advantage still intact, but eventually, in the 69th minute, Mickey Ginn levelled the scores. Ten minutes later, Coventry were in front through Keith Houchin, although with seven minutes to go, Leeds would send the game to extra time. But nine minutes into the extra period, Dave Bennett got the winner. Coventry City were going to Wembley. Coventry's league form stuttered in the second half of the season, as they finished 10th, but this was still a remarkable improvement on previous seasons. And now, all eyes were on Wembley. On the 16th of May, 1987, Coventry City walked out onto the Wembley turf alongside Tottenham Hotspur. Spurs, who had won the famous trophy twice that decade, were firm favourites. But Curtis and Sillett had installed belief into the side, and the Sky Blues firmly believed it would be their year. The game kicked off on a sunny day in front of 96,000 supporters, but Coventry's dreams were almost immediately in jeopardy. After only two minutes, Clive Allen headed the ball in to net his 49th goal of the season and give Tottenham the lead. Coventry, however, was still full of belief, and in the ninth minute, Dave Bennett rounded Ray Clements and netted to level the scores. Chances fell to both sides, with Cyril Regis having a goal disallowed, as both teams looked to put their noses in front. Ogrizovic was in fine form, keeping Tottenham at bay, but in the 41st minute, Gary Mabbott took advantage of poor positioning from the Coventry goalkeeper to make it 2-1. Tottenham would keep their lead going into the break. Both sides continued to produce chances, as Tottenham looked to seal victory whilst Coventry fought to keep their dreams alive. In the 63rd minute, a counter-attack saw Bennett have the ball on the right-hand side for Coventry. He whipped it into the box, where diving to meet it was Keith Houchin. 
he couldn't miss. Coventry levelled the scores, and were not out of it by any means. The 90 minutes came to an end, and the game would go into extra time. John Sillick gave a passionate team talk on the pitch, trying to inspire his players to make history. Both teams are running out of energy, but in the 96th minute, Lloyd McGrath had the ball on the right. He crossed it into the middle, and the ball ricocheted off Gary Mabbott's knee, looped over Ray Clements, and into the net. The Tottenham defender had scored at both ends, and Coventry were in front. There was no coming back from this for Spurs. Coventry held on, and their crowd roared with joy as the final whistle went. After 104 years, Coventry had won their first major trophy. The men behind it were George Curtis, a man who had never managed before, and John Sillett, who had only previously managed Hereford United and the Coventry youth team. It was the stuff that dreams are made of. Brian Kilcline climbed the Wembley steps and lifted the trophy in the air. The FA Cup had a brand new home. The joyful John Sillett was seen dancing with the trophy as Coventry City lapped the pitch. The magic of the FA Cup was on full show. There has been little to smile about in recent memory for Coventry, but the memories of 87 will never leave. It was one of the most unlikely victories in the famous competition's history, and all those involved are still welcomed back to Coventry with open arms. George Curtis and John Sillett both passed away in 2021, and their deaths were met with huge outpourings of grief from the Coventry faithful. What the future may bring for Coventry City remains uncertain, but nobody can change the fact that on one fine day in May 1987, there were no clouds, only sky blue.